Hello everyone and welcome to today's reflection on the gospel. I'm reading from Luke chapter 22 verses 19-20. Then Jesus took the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after the meal saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. Brothers and sisters, for me, the high point of today's gospel is the institution of the Eucharist. So I'm going to speak to you about the Eucharist, but I thought the best possible way to convince you of its power is by giving you true life testimonies of its power. In Luxembourg, the captain of the forest guard was speaking to a butcher. The butcher's shop was on the way to church. In stepped an old lady who said, I want a small bone with a little meat on it so I can make a little soup for myself. And the butcher said, well, that little bone with a little meat on it also costs money. Do you have money? And she said, no, I don't have any money, but I'm going to church. I'm going to hear a mass and offer it up for you. Well, you go to church, hear your mass and we'll see how much it is worth. So on her way back, she stopped again at the butcher's shop and she said, Do you have that bone ready for me? And he said, the butcher answered her, I already told you, lady, that that bone with meat costs money. Do you have money? No, she said, I heard a mass and offered it up for you. All right, let us see how much that mass is worth, said the butcher. And he wrote on a small slip of paper, she heard one mass and put it on one pan of the scale. The scale immediately sank to the bottom. The butcher was amazed that the little piece of paper did not even fly off in the wind. So he kept his calm and he said, okay, come on, let's now see how much it is worth. And he put one little leg, two legs in the whole leg of lamb. And that one slip of paper outweighed all the meat that the, that the butcher had put on the other pan of the scale. But that was not all. The butcher, who had never gone to church, started going to church. The captain of the forest guard started going to church and took his two sons to church, who in due course of time became priests. I'm going to give highlight for you only three parts of the Mass. And I hope what testimonies I give you will convince you of the reality and the power of the Eucharist. The first part that I'm coming to is the I confess or the confiteor. And in that, when we, are, we confess our sins to the Lord, when we are going to visit Pope Francis or Joe Biden, President of America, I'm very sure we are appropriately dressed. How are we dressed inwardly when we come into the presence of our God? In Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 to 14, the Lord gives us the parable of the wedding feast, where he sends out invitations to his friends and nobody comes. All of them have excuses. He sends his servants to call them. One goes to his newly married wife, the other to his oxen, the third to his farm, etc., etc., so the angry king sends his servants out and he says, go to the highways and byways, collect everybody whom you can get there and bring because my banquet hall will be filled and my meal will be eaten. And so that is what they do. They go to the highways and the byways and bring everyone there. And then the, pre the king goes to visit or should we say greet his guests. And he finds one without the wedding garment. And he tells him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And the man was speechless. He had no excuse to make. And we might all think, poor fellow, but that is not what we should think. Because if we are doing that, then we are forgetting the custom of the Middle East. The Middle Eastern tradition was that the person who held the banquet, the king or whoever held the banquet, provided all his guests with a wedding garment. That means there was an antechamber in which all these wedding garments were hung. And all you needed to do was reach up, take one and put it on. In that way, there would be no high or low 
rich or poor, everyone would be equal in the sight of the host, in this case, the king. This man could have done that, but he didn't do it, which is why he got thrown out. He told, he was told, the servants were told by the king, bind him hand and foot and throw him out into the outer darkness. Now we, brothers and sisters, have no righteousness of our own. All our righteousness is like filthy rags before the Lord. The Lord Jesus himself clothes us in his garment of righteousness, his precious blood. And we need to confess our sins, put on that robe of righteousness which the Lord is giving us and then come into his father's presence. If we don't bother to do that, that means we're not even concerned about how we come into the presence of the heavenly father. And Jesus said, in that case, I will throw you out because I care how you come into my father's presence. The second part of the mass I want to highlight is the words of the consecration or elevation themselves. Many years ago, there was a young girl who was in love with a Muslim boy who had only one dream and ambition to go abroad. This girl's parents were very distressed about this relationship and they approached Father A.B. D'Souza, who was at that time in charge of the healing and deliverance ministry of the Archdiocese of Bombay. My husband and I were in Father A.B.'s team at that time. And Father A.B. decided to have a mass in the girl's house, which was permitted at that time. And so at that mass, there was only this girl and her Muslim boyfriend. There was the parents of this girl, there were my husband and myself and another close friend in the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. Father decided to pray over this girl after the gospel. And as he started praying over her, she started laughing. A mocking, jeering laughter. And we all told her, say Jesus, she couldn't say. We said, say Mary, she couldn't say. This good girl brought up in a good Catholic home could not pronounce the names of Jesus and Mary. She started saying, Jesus, Mary, who are they? They can't take me abroad. See, I can see a handsome man. He's dressed in black and he's telling me that he can take me abroad. But before that, I will have to sleep on blood. And this was going on for some time. All our praying in tongues and Father's deliverance could do nothing. Finally, Father said, let us continue with the Mass. And at, as we stood around the table, the scene we imagined was the fact, sacrificial lamb ready to be sacrificed. The angels are standing in awe. The solemn sacrifice of Calvary is about to be taking place. The, the cross is about to be lifted up. That bridge between heaven and earth is about to be built. And all the angels are singing, holy, holy, holy. And as Father said, on the night before he suffered, he took bread into his holy hands. She started saying, he's running, he's running, he's running away. And at the words, this is my body, she said, he's here. And I asked her, who's here? And she said, Jesus. That beautiful name that could not come out all this time, now came out at the words of consecration. What is more, the boyfriend, the Muslim boyfriend, started sobbing. She fell into a deep sleep. She got up after the mass was over, made a good confession, received communion. That relationship broke up. The girl got happily married to a very good Catholic man, is today grandmother of two children. What is more, the Muslim boy became Catholic and my husband and I are his godparents. And the third and last part of the Mass that I want to highlight for you is communion, when the Lord comes into our hearts. How many times have I not sensed Him saying, instead of so much of talking, I wish people would allow me to just give them a hug. Sister Breege McKenna, in her book, Miracles Do Happen, tells us about her friend, Sister Margaret, who was born without muscles to the use of Agus, the food pipe. So she could not have any solid food right from the age of one. When she started eating anything solid, she would vomit. And this went on till she was 50 years old. 
And finally, one day, Sister Breach asked her, why don't you ask the Lord to heal you? And she said, come on, this is congenital. So what? Why do you put limits to the Lord's power? So she decided to make a proper nine days novena, to pray, to fast, to ask the Lord to heal her. Nine days over, on the tenth day, she went to receive communion with great anticipation and expectation in her heart. But she felt nothing different, nothing new happened. So that evening she came back, what would she do? She would put bread, meat, fish, bread, everything into a blender, blend it and make it into a meal and bring down that glass of meal. So that night also she came down with her glass of meal. And she told the Lord, it's okay Lord, you don't want to heal me, it's fine, I've accepted this, your will be done. But in the middle of the night she got up with a very strong urge to eat something solid. And she remembered that the sisters had eaten lamb chops for dinner and the leftovers were kept in the fridge. So she went to the fridge, took out the leftovers, prepared everything, chops, potato, carrot, everything and started eating morsel by morsel, expecting to vomit at any time. But she finished the whole meal and did not vomit. From then on, she started coming regularly for all meals and eating with the rest, like the rest, without her glass of meal. And the sister in charge, the superior, was so stunned that she said, I want you to take another x-ray. So sister Margaret went to the doctor to take another x-ray. The doctor laughed and he said, I don't know how you educated people can behave like this. How do you expect anything different from the original x-ray, which showed that you had no muscles at all when you were even one year old? And she said, I don't know anything, doctor. I only know that I'm being obedient to my superior. And the doctor went, took in the x-ray, came out and he was sobbing. So she thought there was something wrong. She started crying. And the doctor was crying because he could not believe his eyes. Brand new muscles to the esophagus. He asked her, how did this happen? And she answered, Holy Communion. This doctor had not gone to church for 40 years. Brothers and sisters, the Eucharist, the source and summit of our life. Like the apostles at Emmaus, may our eyes be opened. May our hearts burn within us as we listen to his word. And may we recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Amen. Mm -hmm.